Listen. Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo show. I'm your host today, Casey DeFritis, and today I am joined by Brian Altano. Hello. Zach Ryan. Harvest Moon. <laughs> and Tom Marks. Hello. Of the Marxian game genre. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining me so early in the morning. I'm sorry for doing this to you, but I really Hi, Casey. appreciate it. Hello. It's how's It's all your fault like that we're here o'clock. so early. We're cool. It's 10 o'clock. That's, that's early, Brian's, guys. Brian's got a kid now. 10 is like... That's eight. nothing. <laughs> I'm up for like six hours before 10 a.m. Yeah. Well, today we have an incredibly <laughs> packed show. We're going to be mm. talking about all the Smash updates. We're going to touch upon the Metroid news that dropped right after our show release last week. Thanks, Nintendo. Also, <laughs> thanks, Nintendo. Uh, they dropped a financial report at like 3 o'clock in the morning last night. Mm -hmm. So we're also <laughs> going to talk about that. Japan. It's crazy <laughs> over there. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's always 3 o'clock in the morning in Japan. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. <laughs> Just every every hour of the day, it's, it's 3 a.m. Just 3 a.m., always. Constant time. That's why they're so quiet. But right before getting into that Smash update, I do want to make a very short correction. So Perrin, I think, a Wiki's contribu contributor last week, and his name is Tiz, and you can mm. find him at Twitter at Tiz Teaches. Thank you so much for all of your Smash help. I super, super appreciate it. Um, he's done a ton of stuff on the Wiki. And with that, let's talk about that giant Smash 2.0 update. Wait, what mm -hmm. was the mistake? Oh, we pronounced his name wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. We said your name wrong. Your name is Tig. We called him Fire Emblem Three Heroes. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think we called. Uh, I think Pierce said Tig, but um, it is Tiz with a Z. So thank you for that. But yeah, Smash 2.0. Yeah. And Piranha Plant. <sighs> Shadow and Nowhere. Balance updates. Giant list of patch notes. Yeah. Do you want so? But first, some PSAs. Do you guys want a good PSA or a bad PSA first? Ooh, uh, let's do the bad one first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bad PSA. Don't use Piranha Plant, Duck Hunt, Me Sword Fighter. Into all star mode, or it'll corrupt your save. Okay. What? Or it potentially corrupt your okay. save. Okay. So just using those characters in all star mode might might bork your save. Yes. Okay. And real quick, the good PSA first. Um, if you have purchased Smash Bros by the thirty first uh -huh. and registered it, if you have a physical copy, mm -hmm. it's automatic. If it's a digital, uh, you actually have until June to redeem your code. Okay. So oh, if cool. you're watching this, yes, for Piranha Plant. So if you're watching the show on IGN.com, you can still do that today. If you're watching on YouTube, you're too late. So uh, <laughs> that's true, yeah. but also uh, that that means that couldn't Piranha Plant still bork your save in June? Uh, May, hopefully, hopefully they fix it. Hopefully they'll, they'll have yeah. fixed it. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, if, if you bought it digitally and you're like, I didn't get a code, you probably did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should search yeah. your email inbox for Piranha Plant mm -hmm. Specifically. in quotes, and yeah. you will probably find it. And yeah. it's spelled weirder than you think. There's a secret H in that word. That's right. <laughs> Piranha. Look, look around. Most people forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but actually, I think the the subject title is Nintendo saying, thank you for purchasing Smash Bros. And yeah. it's really it's, generic. It's not like, here's your code. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you deleted it. And this is why I never clean up my inboxes and why I have like more than 500,000 emails. 500,000? You know, there might be a code in there that I need There might thing. be a Piranha Plant <laughs> yeah. in your email. lurking, Piranha yeah. Plant. Um, this is cool that they are uh, very open about the patch notes for this because that's mm -hmm. not, I mean, we saw with the 7.0 update on Switch recently, they were just kind of like stability yeah. and also some new avatars. Good night. But we don't really know what that means. But with this, they were pretty forthcoming and just dumped a bunch of information, which is cool. Yeah, yeah let's talk about that. So they did, they, Nintendo has done such a better job with these patch notes than they have before, mm -hmm. but they're still not really conclusive. Yeah. You still well, have to do testing. It's a huge step forward, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I was going to say, just a little detail. I was going to say it's like baby steps, right? Like Nintendo has, like Brian was saying, they've never been very transparent in their patch notes, be it like their firmware or their hardware or their software. Like it's always like, well, we got in there, we made some tweaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Find out. It's more when stable you, now. When you play yeah. New Smash, yeah. Yep. Game um, balance adjustments. Yeah, exactly. That's like the, the famous one, right? Yeah. But it's just like, it's nice that they're finally kind of catching up to what modern video game updates look like and yeah. giving us at least some insight into what they're getting in there and messing around with. So. Slowly but surely, but I still want like crunchier data than that. Mm. I still want the numbers of things because even now the community went through and rounded up like, okay, who got changed? Let's try to make sense of this. And we're getting things wrong because Nintendo is using language and words that is not quite what the community used. So mm -hmm. a couple characters like Pikachu and Pichu got mm -hmm. things like their their hit stun time was reduced on like grabs and certain attacks. And that and everyone sounds was like, bad. Yeah, everyone was like, oh, they got nerfed. But hit stun time being reduced is a, is a good, good thing. thing. Yeah. So actually they got buffed and people didn't figure this out until they started That's testing it. it. Mm -hmm. It's like, Nintendo, why don't you just 
tell us exactly what you did. I wish they did too, because the, actually I find patch notes that detailed to be like sort of comical. I was playing Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront 2 for a while and they would do things that they'd be like, Chewbacca's neck hair is a quarter inch longer. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, all right, that's good to know in case he gets clipped there by like a thermal detonator or something. Um, but no, they're, I think they're, like Zach said, it's baby steps towards that, hopefully. Yeah. And one day we will get those obnoxiously detailed patch notes. But for now, we're inching closer. Yeah, I would... I, even if they don't get really detailed with the notes, I would love for them to include explanations yeah. as to why they're doing some of these things. Yeah. And that's what I'm interested in. I want Sakurai to say, we increased, we made it so, so Krom had a really big change and he can't do his combo where he does, what, what move is it? I don't remember specifically what move, but I know it's it's the he one where it a, kills both of you. Yeah. But it kills you first, or it kills them first, so right. it's good. But now it kills Krom first. Yeah. So you can't use that as a finisher anymore. Oh, it's a it's a really really significant thing, but in competitive. Yeah, yeah, in competitive play. Mm -hmm. But I want to know why they why did they do that? Do they yeah. hate Crom? Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, I'm contractually uh, obligated to remove myself from this conversation. So <laughs> I'm sorry, Zach. That's okay. <laughs> but man, so yeah, they had a lot of different changes, and you can actually go find those on the Nintendo support website. I'm pretty sure we have a yeah. link. Yeah. To it in the article that you wrote, Tom. Yeah, and that's that's the other funny thing about this whole thing and this is such a minor complaint but it's like the the update thing on the smash site or on, on when you actually load up your smash game says 2.0 update and it says game balance adjustments or whatever the line is and then it says you can find the full details of what fighters were changed on the official website mm -hmm. and everyone was like where is it yeah. what official website and it's like on a support page and it has like yeah. a button like did you find this article helpful at the <laughs> bottom like it's like it's such a weird place to put it and it is it's so such a minor complaint find. like i asked tom for the link this morning because i googled it and i was like this is not on the front page of google i cannot find this yeah. just articles about it that aren't linking to the very page. hidden yeah but i mean like you said, it is a very good step forward. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad they're doing it. I hope they get better. And I appreciate it, and I'm happy to have another Smash update. Yeah. yeah. It's also, like, totally irrelevant to me personally because I yeah. play that game with items on, like, yeah. idiot, and it's I just know. chaos. It's, I'm like, it's like, I, and I only ever play one character. <laughs> yeah. It's like, did they do anything to Young Link? No? Okay, <laughs> cool, then I don't care. Like, yeah, this is fine. One cool thing that's, like, a general sort of kind of insight into their philosophy that we saw from this that's, that's relevant even, I think, if you don't play competitively is... Uh, they kind of buffed, did mostly buffs. Yeah. They only did a few nerfs and they did a few kind of like tweaks on people, but across the board, they very much were like, all right, we're just going to raise up a bunch of people instead of like just slamming down a lot of the top ones, yeah. which is the balanced philosophy that you see in a lot of other competitive games is mm. like lower the, the power cap and they're just like, nah, let's go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, I'm cool with that. That's a very smash thing to do. Yeah, like, oh, okay, just crank it up. Everything then. better. Yeah. yeah. Man, so back to the save corruption. I just wanted to mention real quick, if your save does get corrupted, if you have a cloud save because you have Nintendo Switch Online, you yeah. can just get your save back. But if you don't have that, you're kind of out of mm -hmm. luck. That's how they get you. And if not, don't worry. World of Light only takes 175 <laughs> hours to get through. So. I would, and I, unlocking all the characters in this game in just a few seconds a day. And you're, I would you're right quit. I would quit. J your job? Like That would just, just like, be it? I'm like, done with everything video games. I'm never touching one ever again. <laughs> Nintendo it's Switch ridiculous. in the oven. Side note, I was at uh, PAX South two weekends ago, and they had a kiosk at a booth showing off something. I think it was like a third-party controller, and they had Smash Brothers set up there. And they started the game with like no characters unlocked. And by the end of the show, people playing like all day, they had like... <laughs> 14 more characters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is like literally crowdsourcing yeah. that. Yeah. So that's pretty funny. Yeah. That's the way to do it. So have you guys played Piranha Plant? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I haven't had an opportunity um, yet. He's weird, but I like him. Yeah. Uh, his so movement strange. is kind of slow, hopping around, which is expected because he has like weird feet and he's Little in a, baby literally feet. in a pot. <laughs> Little booties. Um, but I love, he is such a like feisty little dude like when he gets a gun and he just he's You're like, a feisty little one yeah, he like he curls his lip up like i was yeah, i was thinking like curl how do you how do you exude so much character and personality out of something that doesn't, doesn't have a face yeah it doesn't yeah. have a face doesn't have eyes doesn't have uh like hands really it has like leaves, leaves and they'll wrap it they'll wrap the leaves around like a gun yeah. and he'll just like look at you and do this like tommy gun thing and like it's so much fun um a lot of his special moves are really smart his uh alternate colors are really smart again i play smash brothers like an arcade idiot so i don't know how well he'll fit into like the the you know hardcore Credit fighting scene, scene yeah. but um he's really cool i like him a lot yeah. His down B is maybe one of my favorite moves in the entire Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. series because it 
uh, you, you go, you pull down into the pot, right? And then you can hold it and then shoot out, but you can tilt yourself. And that's great in the air because you can just spin while you're doing it. Yeah. But on ground, the pot just like tips, tips over <laughs> and then you can't get back up and you just have to like shoot <laughs> sideways. And if you like do it when you're on the edge, the pot will actually fall off the edge. It's really cute. Uh, it's really funny. He's also got a lot of like thematic moves to being a stationary plant mm -hmm. where it feels like a lot of his special moves are all about like you have to stand still to do this mm -hmm. or you have to like kind of plant yourself no pun ah. intended uh, like plant yourself there and charge a move and then the effect goes out from you rather than you doing something or moving yes. really yeah. quick. Like his yeah, side yeah. B, he charges up a, a poison gas cloud. Mm -hmm. and yeah. When you use it again, he spits it out. And it also causes, um, it's like a poison smoke bomb because it causes obscurities as well. Yeah. Like you mm. can't see behind it. He's, he's a fun character. I love when he runs, his little feet come out, but also his like tongue is hanging out and he's just like, yeah, and he's, I don't know. He's animated like a yeah. cartoon dog yeah, almost. Yeah, <laughs> like, It's kind of great. He's kind of got like a bit of a poochie vibe. Yeah, 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 totally. And it, it's like, I don't know, a, Smash fans want like they want Goku and they want like you know Waluigi and they want these like iconic characters from throughout history and every now and then they're just like no you get this instead you know like I I, I kind of appreciate that because yeah. it's it's not you know there's so many like AAA characters in this game and I like when they just go sideways and they're like but what if a piranha plant was here and he fought Mega Man and Mario yeah and I'm not gonna lie I've been I was on this show a lot being really skeptical of this character yep. because I thought it could be super generic and I think they did a really good job they of did. making making him have personality, or I guess mm -hmm. we keep saying him, but it's like it, or it's a plant, it's a whatever. Plant. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they made Piranha Plant have a lot of personality, and it, it's encouraging to see this character, and it's encourage, it makes me more confident that if they do continue doing that, and I don't think they will now that we've seen they're adding Joker from Persona, yeah. but if they do say, hey, we're adding Dry Bones as a character, that, really, that idea really scared me before, and now that I've seen what they've done with Piranha Plant, I'm kind of like... All right, I'll, I'm interested to see what you do with that. You mm -hmm. know? I have a little more faith in that regard. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like they can fit anything into that yeah. world at this point mm -hmm. and confidently make it work with like with grace and humor in mm -hmm. the same way that this character runs around. One thing I am slightly disappointed about Prawn Plan is that he doesn't have a spike. Mm. You'd expect with that oh, pot, yeah, and just like down a someone with the pot, it looks like it would be, but mm -hmm. it doesn't send people straight down. It send people to side to side. side. Yeah. yeah, it's like, like a flimsy uh, terracotta pot. I think it's just not very strong. I wish I kind of wish he had a move that broke it. <laughs> oh well, yeah, if you, if you, and then change, you just have his little ruts yeah. running around. <laughs> if you change skins, the the color of the piranha plant changes, but also the pot becomes a pipe. And uh, so on some of the other skins, uh, either a green pipe or a red pipe or different colors so cool. from the, the Mario series. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cute. So we also got, with this update, the ability to play with up to four players in, on the spirit board, which I really appreciate this update. It sounds really small, but I really like doing the spirit board. I like doing these challenges. And to be able to do it with another person so that we don't have to, people to sit back is really nice. Yeah. And do you, it's... Um, do you know if everybody gets, like, the spirit? Like how does that so work? So it's just it's co-op. It's local co-op. Who gets co -op. who gets the spirit? The spirit. <laughs> so, Give me the ghost. <laughs> so it's local co-op. So it's only the the account that you're playing on. Okay. But I thought it was going to be significantly easier. It's like oh, so there's like up to four of us. We have four tries. Yeah. But no, it's just the first person who dies, and everyone is out. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. So. Oh, so you, you got to bring good people with you. Yes. Yes, and I I did not do a good job last night, and I felt really bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I I really like that because it's one of those. I like that they added that because it's it's one of those things where when I was reviewing the game, I was playing the Spirit Boat, and I was like, oh, this is really fun. I wonder why I can't do a multiplayer, yeah. right? Like it wasn't like a big issue. It was just like, oh, that's kind of kind of weird that you just can't do this with friends, well, especially in a game mm -hmm. that is so like so multiplayer focused yeah. in every other facet. Basically, I miss yeah. I miss the multiplayer events that they used to have in the old games. Yeah, so this kind plenty of time for those to come back around though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. So we get that back now, and I appreciate it. And it, even though it doesn't make things necessarily easier with most of the battles, if it's a stamina battle, it does make it easier. Mm -hmm. So there's that, especially because the AI, if you get really low stamina HP, they will go after you. They mm. will completely ignore the other person, leaving them mm. super open to their attacks. But mm. other than that. So, man, there's just so much Smash info. I also have some notes because Sakurai also released some play data yeah. from, for one week of play between so the week of December 30th and January 5th, mm -hmm. which was interesting. It seems like Smash is actually a really balanced game. Like, for example... Um, no fighter has lower than a 40% win rate, and no one has above a 56.8% win rate. That's in a, pretty close. In elite one-on-one yeah. -on -one yeah. smash. 
yeah. which oh, is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that is crazy. It's really, really even, and Ganondorf is actually the most played player. What? Yeah. In, in a in elite, right? oh, one-on-one one smash. But Cloud is the most played player overall. Overall? Yeah. Hmm. And I didn't expect either of those characters. Yeah. That's and so that's so weird to like bring decades of Nintendo characters together and everyone's like, I'll take Cloud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean he's got he's got good spiky hair. Kingdom Hearts just came out. Yeah, People are looking looking for some nostalgia. I guess this is from December thirtieth, so actually yeah. there's no excuse, so never mind. <laughs> but the that's other really thing. Interesting, yeah, yeah, the other thing. I wonder thing who that, the least used character is. I Probably wanted to know that too. Yeah. I wanted to know the least used character and I wanted to know who has that fifty six point eight percent win rate, but he didn't go into that. Yeah, but what's that plenty of time for that though? Because so, so this information came out of a Famitsu interview. Yes, um, and the theory is that Sakurai is going to have like a column in Famitsu moving forward, and like he's specifically going to break down Smash stuff like this. That's awesome. Which would be very cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it. I'd love to see more insight from him, and maybe one day they will release him from Smash. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think I don't, so. But no, he probably not. He said this is going to be his last one, didn't he? He, he says said that, that every He says that every time. time. <laughs> That's like Kojima <laughs> talking about Metal Gear, like, this oh, is my God. last Smash game. Yeah. Like, guess what? It's nah. not yet. He, he even talked about that. He said he that he thought everyone was going to be his last Smash because he's, like, shocked they let him make more of them, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> so... It's his last one, but yeah. who knows? Well, I mean, we'll talk about the sales numbers later, but that's <laughs> <you'll> <laughs> see, certainly not the last you'll one. You'll see yeah. why they'll never release him from that yeah. prison. And there are two more notes that he was surprised by. So everyone, he said that everyone was saying King K. Rool is overpowered, but he actually has pretty average win rates. It's 51.9%. And the other thing he noticed is that even though Daisy and Peach are pretty much the same characters, Peach has a significantly higher win rate than Daisy does. I think it's something between 10%. Yeah, Which it's, is it's really like really weird. I think it was like a fifty-four percent, fifty-four point four percent win rate on Peach, and only like a fifty percent win rate on Daisy. We yeah. ran an article. We and ran an article. They played a similar uh, amount from Mitchell Saltzman last week, uh, where he interviewed some pro players about the state of the competitive scene of Smash, and Peach is like one of the most popular characters yeah. on the competitive scene now. And I think that's part of the number disparity because it's really hard to look at these numbers and just be like, "This is fact," right? Like, right. that's they're really, really, really great indicators, but. There's so many things that can go into it, and one of them is the competitive community and people who really play Smash Hardcore know that Peach is great, mm -hmm. and they don't really talk about Daisy, even though Daisy is the, uh, pretty much the same character. Not exactly the same, but pretty much the same. Um, and so competitive players know to play Peach, yeah. and that's why they're the better players are playing Peach, whereas a lot of people are playing Daisy who maybe don't really care about that side of stuff as much, and so you probably have more not highly skilled players playing Daisy than you do playing Peach just because she's not talked about in the competitive community as much, mm -hmm. and therefore her win rate is lower. And I don't know if that's for sure, but it does show that like these numbers are not free from bias. I think Sakurai even says like they're free from bias, and it's like, no, stat, like, <laughs> stats not, like that yeah. are not yeah. free from bias. Right. Because... <laughs> Even the K rule thing, right? Is like if everyone says K rule is overpowered, then you get a bunch of then you might get more people who don't like if he's a harder character to use, then you might get more people playing him who don't know how to use him, and therefore his win rate goes down, even if he is good. And I don't again, I don't know if that's actually the case, but there's a lot that goes into these numbers, and it's really cool that we're seeing them at all, yeah. right? Because then we can start talking about this. We can say, okay, why does Peach have a higher rate, win rate than Daisy? Well, I can say with some certainty that 100% of Zach Ryan's think Young Link is great. <laughs> that's true. That's actually you probably have a fairly common name. Yeah, actually, I've met, a, I've met a that. couple of Zach Ryan's. Yeah, yeah, I uh, don't I'd like them. <laughs> I'd be interested to see how many, like, what percentage of players immediately turn items off. <laughs> like, I, I wonder what those stats what, are like. What's the point? Hmm. Like, I know that they're, they're like, no, we don't, don't. I know, you, you I know, know. that I'm opening have up like a real Zach. can of worms, but like, Smash to me, the chaos. Is you can actually I turn come. off the can of worms. Yeah, but the chaos is what I come to Smash for. And, like, yeah. I'm not going to put every single item on, but, like, if you're not going to put the, like, the ultimate power-ups and you're not going to put, like, a couple of those things, pepper them in there, like, come on. Because come they on. add a... They like, add come a on, the spicy food? Yeah, they I, add... I, I keep them all on, so... I mean, they, But to the 
pro players defense they add they they remove the random chaos of the game yeah and make and it, it more skill more based, based which is why everyone hated tripping in brawl because you yeah. couldn't do that i mean i understand that but but that, this what about the laser sword <laughs> that's what i'm saying <laughs> this is what i talked about in my review is like that's what's so amazing about super Smash. oh we get it you reviewed the game no no no, no. <laughs> but this is this is what's like so particularly good about that series as a fighting game is that you have both types of players living in harmony within yeah. that game and a lot of other fighting games, it's like either you're good or you're bad. Well, let's and Smash Bros. opens up this whole window of like, this is a high skill fighting game, but also if you don't want it to be that, it's just a fun party game. Well, let's, right. be both let's not mince words. Like the reason that I like turning items on is because it gives me like an awful Smash player somewhat of an advantage. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like yeah. all, I have the to do is, all I have to do is be fast. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just need to get yeah. to that item before somebody else does, and yeah. then I have a distinct advantage. Well, like, I, I, yeah, I'm in the same boat, and also that it adds even more sort of Nintendo fun to it because mm -hmm. there's like in the middle of playing, like I'm like, oh, I know what that item is, or I know who that Pokemon is, or I know mm -hmm. what that like assist trophy is like uh, no matter what i'm doing I'll, they'll drop waluigi into the game or like some weird Mega Man character and knuckles like, or something here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so, knuckles but you in know, summary there's no there's no <laughs> wrong way to play smash whether you play with items or without well playing with one joy con that's the okay, wrong way so, okay, yeah, there's, <laughs> that is that, that is, is especially wrong the right way. joy con with, the, with the, it's that's the wrong way to play smash. all right nbc <laughs> endorsed playing with one joy con is the wrong way to play that's smash true. and if you're doing it that way you put it on the record i think we can all come together and agree on that yeah Let's well, yeah. kind of show you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on, we did miss some news last week because it came out right after our show. Thanks, Nintendo. Mm -hmm. uh, Metroid Prime Four is being <laughs> delayed. Yeah, it's being among, a word for it. Yeah, that is things? a word for it. It's being started over from scratch. Rebooted. Rebooted. Reset. It Reset. was originally being developed, I believe, by Bando Namkai. Well. We so that know. was rumored it was a rumor. that it was a it was a Bandai Namco. Okay, joint. so we don't actually know that. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> redacted. <laughs> it's Bando Nando. It, I mean, it was Nando's one of those things. It was one of those things that was so rumored and so like like mentioned so often that there's probably a pretty good chance that it was in development somewhere at Bandai Namco, mm -hmm. but we'll. We will never know that. Like, yeah. Right. We'll, Nintendo is not the kind of company that will disclose that information, especially now that they have this black mark on That would game, just right? be like, mean. Yeah. They've also like had select parts of those teams working on select parts of Nintendo games for a while, mm -hmm. including Smash Brothers and the Mario Kart uh, arcade games. And so yeah. like, <laughs> it's not, it's not un unheard of that that would be a thing, but either way, it's not a thing anymore. Yeah. Which, yeah. Is, is, which is what they, they came up with a video and it was just like, Seeing this like appear on Twitter that was just sort of, sort of like, we've got news from Metroid Prime. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> and it was uh, Shinya Takahashi <laughs> from the senior marketing executive mm -hmm. officer just on a white background talking well, about yeah. Metroid. Andrew Goldfarb, friend of the show, pointed out that uh, when they delayed Breath of the Wild, it was almost the exact same video. It was, uh, I forget who it was at the time delivering the message, but it was the same th deal, like a, a higher up at Nintendo on a white backdrop mm -hmm. and like almost beat for beat the way that the, the speeches were laid out was like, this is what's happening. Here's why it's happening. This is what you can expect from the future. Thank you. Good night. Like it was yeah. actually 3 a.m. in both videos. That's right. Uh, it's crazy. Really weird. Yeah. That and they have a clock on the wall time. and it's just, it's just a room. <laughs> it's like a hyperbolic time chamber, but yep. for 3 a.m. But I don't want to spend too much. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time on this because it is now technically a week old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's going. Metroid Prime Four is going to Retro Studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and well, so there's a couple of things that I find really interesting. One, people in this office, especially, were like losing their minds because they're like, "Yeah, it's going back to retro," but it's like, who is left at retro? Right, right. Like the the key players. Uh, uh, on Metroid Prime specifically, with the exception of a couple of people, moved on to do their own thing. Like we saw a lot of people move out and work on, um, oh God, what was it called? Recore, mm -hmm. right? Like that's a, a spiritual successor to the Metroid Prime franchise. Like we've seen these people go on and they do went on to Halo things. as well. Halo as well. Oh. So, um, yes, it's very cool that it's going back to retro, but I'm curious as to like how many of those people that were on that original team mm -hmm. are still working on, are now back to working on Metroid Prime. I mean, who knows? For, for all I know, it could be. Uh, three quarters of that team are still there. I also but saw, we do know that key players have have departed. Did from. you see one of the former devs from Retro tweeted out that who's basically like, so where where's that thing we were working on since 2015? And also, did they just add a second studio to work on this new thing? Like yeah. question mark. Um, oh. So that's people at the studio sort of being like, or formerly at the studio, kind of saying, what like who is making this? Right. Like, uh, and so that's well, that's when, what's really interesting. Well, also when you're second party at Nintendo, like Retro. Um, 
I believe they're second party, but when, when you're that kind of studio to them, do they come in and just say, okay, stop whatever you're doing, Yep. Um, and now you're going to make this game instead? Right. I mean, that, I, that for all scary. intents and purposes, I mean... They could, if they're bankrolling the game and they're bankrolling that company, because like, what else has Retro been working on since well, Tropical Freeze? Specifically, what yeah. we talked about on this show, I believe, like a year or a so ago, was the Star, Star Fox Racing game that they right. were rumored to be working That's on. That's right. Yeah. And we haven't heard anything on that. We know that Tropical Freeze got ported to Switch and sold tremendously well, like three or four million units or something game. like that, which I think is enough to justify keeping a studio open, especially because I don't know how much major work went into porting. Well, that they put game that over. new monkey in there too. That's true. He was really hard. <laughs> yeah. Very hard to Re make. Retro's an interesting <laughs> studio really fast, too, to look at their, their history because yep. they've only released, like, six games or seven games. Yeah, but they're all bangers. They're all mm -hmm. bangers. Yeah. It's like Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze are the modern ones, and then it was Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3, and then, like, they worked on the port of Mario Kart DS yep. or something like that, and they just have worked on great stuff. It's, and it's crazy to me to think about a seen. Yep. studio that's like, even the worst of the Metroid Prime games, Metroid Prime 2, which is like universally the one that people are like, oh, that one. It's still an amazing game. Yeah. It's just yeah. not as good as the other two. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, they, they ported uh, Don the Donkey Kong Country Returns to 3DS yeah. and then Tropical Freeze to Switch. And yeah. both of those sold really well, mm -hmm. which is like... I don't know if that keeps the lights on. I don't know if like they are staffing up I mean, right must, now. Like, right? yeah, like, right. Because I mean, otherwise they wouldn't exist. Yeah. But um, either way, in, especially in this day and age when companies are getting shuttered left and right, right? Yeah. Like, if your game isn't successful, like, how do you stay uh, viable? Like, yeah. Um, the, the thing that that is such a bummer to me is if this is getting reset at the beginning of 2019, that means we don't see this game until 2022. Yeah. yeah. And that means that, that by the time this game launches, the Switch will have been out for five years. Oh, and how relevant how that. relevant is the Switch at that point? Mm -hmm. Like, are we at the, ver is this the very tail end? Are we looking at like a Twilight Princess situation where it's like, okay, uh, here's the son swan song. You know, it's, well, it's no Kirby, but here's Metroid Prime 4 yep. in the, like the, as the sun sets on the system. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe they'll make it so. N never mind. I was gonna say maybe they'll make it so it comes off of the Switch and the next Nintendo console, like they've done with all those Zelda games. But they're also not looking at any sort of Switch successor exactly. right now. So I mean, right now, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. They they might you know change their tune based on yeah. what PlayStation and Xbox announce. Who knows? Yeah. But so Metroid is delayed, but mm -hmm. Nintendo did announce all of the. They confirmed all of the release dates for all of the other Nintendo games this mm -hmm. year as part of their financial report. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go through this list real quick. Sure. Yoshi's Crafted World on March 29th, Fire Emblem Three Houses in spring 2019, Pokemon RPG for Nintendo Switch late 2019, Animal Crossing for Nintendo Switch 2019, Luigi's Mansion 3 2019, they're all 2019, Damon X <laughs> Machina, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order, Bayonetta is still TBA, Metroid Prime 4 is still TBA, and so these last two weren't listed, but I want to mention them. Um, Mario Kart Tour for mobile was originally going to come out uh, in April, and mm -hmm. now it's set for a summer release. And uh, Persona Q2, new cinema, new cinema Labyrinth, is coming to the West on 3DS on June 4th, which I know Tom and I are both big Persona fans. Didn't you play Persona 2, Zach? Uh, I love yeah. Persona everyone, 4 and Everyone 5, loves yeah. Persona, so we're all very excited for this <laughs> news, too. Yeah, so Persona Q is a really interesting game because it's it's uh, sort of like an Etrian Odyssey, like dungeon crawler, um, but the thing that it does that that is kind of the draw for these this series, the Q series, is like it brings in all these other Persona characters from all the Persona games and just sort of mashes them together and puts them all in the same world in the same timeline, which is really interesting. Um... So yeah, I mean, these games are really cool. I didn't play the original Persona Q. Andrew Goldfarb says it's one of his favorite games yeah. of all time, so mm -hmm. it's something that I'm interested in checking out, for sure. Absolutely. But, yeah. he, Andrew said it, it involves the characters going into movie sets, mm -hmm. which that sounds really sense. interesting yeah. and mm -hmm. fun, and I want to use it. I mean, so we actually do have a... I'm going to move a question block question up here. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but Keaton John Armstrong on Facebook asked, do you think Pokemon will become the tentpole game of 2019, or do you think another game we know or don't know about could take that spotlight? Um, I mean, I don't. It, I, Animal what's, Crossing what's, has what's bigger than Pokemon? Like, like Animal Crossing has like massive selling potential. I don't know if it, it will do Pokemon numbers, but Pokemon is like a household name. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like even if you don't give a <laughs> about, oops, even if you don't care about <laughs> video games at all. Sure, why sorry, not? no Pokemon. <laughs> you care about Pokemon, right? Like it, it. It's you know at least yeah, yeah. of those little monsters. Like yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Like the idea that that especially given the success of Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu last year, like this game is set to do a tremendous 
number on what Nintendo sales figures look like. It, if it comes out in 2019. Yeah. Because I'm skeptical. If it doesn't, I'm, I'm also skeptical, but if it doesn't come out in 2019, Nintendo's going to be in the well, trouble. Pokemon? I really, I really think it is. I can't remember the last time a Pokemon game got delayed. I can't remember. I guess that's true. It's not, yeah, it's not and very common that Nintendo it. delays any of their big and, games. And mm-hmm. this is a reaffirmation, and they always come out in November. Well, I mean, I guess Soul Silver and Heart Gold came out in the spring that year when that game came out, yeah. but yeah, those the, weren't they're, brand new. Yeah, the, they're funny, like the funny thing is, I, I think that, yeah, it is probably the biggest game on this list, but the crazy thing to me is that everything on this list is pretty big in some way or other. Yeah. Not everything, but like Nintendo has a lot of big games coming out this year that there's a new Fire Emblem, Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, and Pokemon game in 2019. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Like yeah. that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's. I think the, the general conversation, like people are looking at this year for Nintendo and being like, ooh, where are all their big games? And what people don't realize is like, Mario and Zelda, and to a lesser extent, Metroid, are like the top tier AAA Nintendo franchises. Those right. are the ones that people like automatically associate when you hear the word Nintendo. Yeah. But then below that, they have, and I don't even want to say B tier, but it's like a second tier of franchises that are supremely popular, but just in a splintered way. Like right. Fire Emblem, Animal Crossing, um, Yoshi, Kirby, like these games have these dedicated fan bases that. Um, Come out in full force when those games get released. Animal Crossing also has that massive casual crossover potential. Um, casual gamers come out and play that game in huge numbers. Uh, people that don't play Metroid and don't play like hardcore Smash Brother matches and stuff like that because they just they want to collect the items and build the house and pay off the the Raccoon Man and get get that money. Animal yeah. Crossing has that people paper. who do play paper. those more difficult games. Like I don't want to call it more difficult, but Zelda, Mario. Yeah all of those kind of games, those people play Animal Crossing too. Yeah, I mean, ironically, games, Dan. games like, uh, you know, Bayonetta and Metroid Prime are going to be the games that sell probably the least of some mm-hmm. of the games on this list. Yeah. They absolutely. don't sell well. I mean, Bayonetta did pretty well on Switch this time around. Uh, it did not on Wii U, but... I, I just think it's hilarious that there's so much coming out in 2019 for Nintendo and mm-hmm. we have a one release date. Yeah. <laughs> we have one release date and two release windows and then a bunch of 2019s. Like, that's, but that's their jam, right? I, like, I know. It's yeah. just so funny that this year looks packed, and we don't know when any of it's going to arrive. It's because yeah. Nintendo loves to do so that thing. of anxious. Like, yeah, but it, like, it, well, as, <laughs> as a wiki, from a wiki's perspective, I could totally see that. But like, <laughs> as somebody that doesn't need to write full guides for a game, I love the approach that they've taken this generation in that they've just been like, and by the way, that game comes out next month. And it's, yeah. whoa, that... That rules. Like we knew it was coming this year, but we had no idea when. So mm-hmm. yeah. And then it's like I was going to take a vacation that week, but I guess I'm not anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> you could this definitely to feels to me like <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> definitely feels like we're going to get a lot of these dates at E3 or just before that, and we're going to start direct. like they're going to really sort of. I feel like they're going to backload the second half of 2019 rather yeah. than put a lot I think, of stuff in I think, the first few months. I think Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion. And Marvel Ultimate Alliance uh, and Pokemon are all fall games. Yeah. I think Damon X Machina Dragon Quest Builders are summer games. And then everything else already has a window. Like, mm. mm-hmm. yeah. All right, let's refer back to this episode and see if Zach was right when that's <laughs> those. Ah, <laughs> for my new segment, Zach was right. <laughs> yeah, for episode 442, we'll come back. I'm just saying out loud so I remember. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. But hey, Brian, you wanted to talk about oh, uh, first party game attach rates. This yeah. Is incredibly interesting. So we got some really cool numbers very late last night at 3 a.m. Japan time. Which <gasps> Thanks, is Nintendo. Just always no. is. <laughs> um, first of all, hardware shipments worldwide. Sorry, I was looking at my phone, I was pulling those up. Um, in Japan, we've seen 7.7 million Switch units. 12.9 million in the Americas and 11 million in other. Uh, now, for that, attach rates. And what that means basically is how many people who own a Switch bought these games. The best selling game on Switch by a pretty big margin is Mario Kart 8, a last gen port. <laughs> so, oh. hooray. Um, 47% of Switch owners own that game, so basically roughly one and two, minus a couple people who were like, no, I have it already. <laughs> um, 43% own Mario Odyssey. 37% own Smash Ultimate, which is huge because that game is less than two months old at this point. Yeah. Um, right under that, uh, 36% own Breath of the Wild. So how how I, is only 36% owning Breath of the Wild? That was because the same reaction I had. That game, like, it's the best launch game of all time. Right. 
Uh, how you bought a system on on launch day and didn't pick up Breath of the Wild? Well, like, I have a theory. Actually, th no, I'll, t I'll tell you what it is. Oh. A lot of people bought switches after the launch window. Sure, there's and that. And when they yeah. came in, they didn't buy it for Breath of the Wild. They bought it for Mario Kart. They bought it, bought for, it for Super Tune. Mario Odyssey. Mar yeah. yeah, and Mario I think Odyssey. I think probably Dummies. on top of that, <laughs> there are probably a lot of people who bought Breath of the Wild on. Wii U, not that there are a lot of people who own Wii U's in general, just probably people who bought Breath of the Wild on Wii U, skipped the launch window, bought a Switch later, and didn't need it again. Yep. Do you like, think a lot of people brought Breath of the Wild on Wii U? Yeah. I think so. I think so. I mean, if you already more than you already owned twelve point five million people <laughs> bought it on Wii U. Like, I mean, like if you already owned a Wii U and weren't desperate for a Switch, and the only game you wanted to play was Breath of the Wild, there's no need for you to mm -hmm. get a Switch for that. Mm, there were no yeah. other launch titles that really. I mean, what were you going to get a Switch for? A One Two Switch? Mm, nah. The game no one talks about anymore. It's yeah. not. It's never on Good. any of these lists. Good. Yeah. Although it sold a million at launch. Good. Um, right because it was that, one of the only games. <laughs> Pokemon Let's Go did 31% of all uh, Switch owners own that game. And 26% own Splatoon 2, which is basically one in four. And the numbers keep dwindling after that. I believe it's like Tropical Freeze and a couple others keep going from there. And but. we know that they just said that they sold, what, like 32 million Switches? 32 million. So we can kind of, like, there's about 15 million Mario Kart yeah. 8 out, like, sold. And maybe? I didn't throw this in here, but they readjusted their sort of fiscal sales pitch of 20 million units down to 17 i think that's lowballing. i think they'll probably hit 18 or 19 but they will not hit 20 but they're not on pace right now yeah yeah exactly but um these are gigantic numbers uh this I, th I believe that i read that the switch is effectively outperforming the first 22 months of almost every other next gen console and mm. including a few last gen consoles ps4 is a little weird because they're neck and neck because switch launched in march uh whereas ps4 launched in november um mm. but those two systems are incredibly close and ps4 has sold incredibly well so uh this bodes well for nintendo so yeah. i know that S smash ultimate beat out smash brawl mm -hmm. is the switch beating out wii overall as well i'm sorry to ask you such a i don't think question. in the first 22 <laughs> months I, did, I don't believe it is because the second year for the nintendo wii was absolutely insane like i don't think people remember like at, at first people were kind of like oh that's cool you can go bowling and make yourself that's great but the next year people like that's when the grandmothers came out and they're like you can go bowling and make yourself it was stuff like <laughs> so with the Wii, like, i would bring the system to like thanksgiving or something and then i'd come back next year and all of my relatives would have one yep. exactly <laughs> it was that mm -hmm. kind of thing they all played resident Evil before they yep. loved it boom headshot so two more really <laughs> short uh it's topics i just wanted to mention that Original Stitch, a Japanese clothing company, is coming out with a line of 151 styled Pokemon shirts. And they are formal, business style, high quality, fully customizable shirts, kind of like the one that Zach Ryan has on. They're really awesome. They are great. They Get have, ready to see a bunch of those shirts on this show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have 151 different patterns, and you can fully customize it. There are men's cuts, women's cuts, casual and formal. And you can change the collar. You can change the solid. You can change the cufflinks. You, there's so many different things you can do with those shirts, and they're only $90. And I know I, that sounds outrageous, and I'm saying out. Customizable <laughs> like fitted shirts, though, for $90. That bucks are like, yeah, yeah, that's the, a good deal. Yeah, and they are I don't are know that it's a good deal, but it's not unheard of. I yeah, mean, it's, it's the yeah. quality that you would wear to a really... An office job that requires or like you to a wear really those nerdy kind of wedding. Yeah. yeah. What I like about these a lot um, a is point. that they're subtle. They're uh, yeah. they're not immediately recognizable as something Pokemon, which means you could wear them to work and people wouldn't really notice them until they really looked. Um, when you look closely, you can sort of see it's just like, oh, that's like you know Pikachu's electrical bolts and there's his little tail, but you wouldn't know like from across the street. It doesn't say like Pokemon, right. <laughs> which is great. They're really nice. They actually have a really nice sentimental trailer on their website that has almost nothing to do with the shirts but it's really cute and i i encourage you guys to go watch it because that's exactly what they're trying the point they're trying to make yep. with that commercial but next um i would like us to have a moment of silence for the death of the we shop channel da, 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 da. Da, 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 <laughs> yes. Anyway, so uh, yeah, the Wii Shop channel uh, closed down on January 30th. You can no longer purchase software on the Wii, but you can download it, but that's only for now because Nintendo said uh, the ability to re-download WiiWare and virtual console games will also stop at some point. We will announce specific details as that time approaches. So mm -hmm. you can access your old purchases. You can't make new purchases. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And I know Brian on a previous episode talked about how to build your own virtual console on mm -hmm. Switch in episode 440. So if you're interested in that, go back and watch that episode. Mm -hmm. That's true. But yeah, this is a this was a really ahead of its time format 
to deliver retro video games to a then modern console. Um, I really like the Wii Shop channel. Uh, I like the fact that we got press releases every week where they'd be like, hey, this uh, obscure, you know, TurboGrafx 16 shmup is here, and so is Kid Icarus, and then next week, here's Mario 2 and a bunch of other things. And also, uh, using it as a vehicle to deliver indie games. Um, where we, you know, that couldn't basically afford a physical retail release was really cool too. I, I played a lot of like really awesome, just small, small developed gems that are on that system that would be eight or nine bucks and, you know, you could download them right to your console. It was a really special thing. Mm. So I appreciate it. I, I'm glad that we have the eShop the way it is now. I miss the virtual console in the way it was. So yeah, it was a good place. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> so man, we are already 40 minutes in. We have a lot to talk about still, um, but I want to talk about what we're playing, and I definitely wanted to talk about at least Unruly Heroes, which yeah. is something we played a little bit last night. Um, it came out last week after that Nindy Direct, mm -hmm. and it is a side-scrolling action RPG mm -hmm. with four different characters with local drop-in co-op. Like you can go in and out whenever, and you can switch between characters freely. And I had a lot of fun with it yesterday. Yeah, Casey and I and Paris sat down and played. And Tom, you got the chance to yeah. play a little bit of it as well. We sat down and played a, a couple of levels, and I was really impressed with the way that you like how fluid it was to switch characters on the fly to solve puzzles. Like we, w one of the things that always kind of bugs me about like a four-player platformer like this is like how you'll get in each other's way. And I didn't feel like we were doing too much of that. Like we were all working really well together, and the characters are really different enough that it, it you can feel. Um, just how different they are, like in terms of their move sets, in terms of like the the abilities that they have to interact with the world. It's a really interesting game, um, and and I will say that like each of these characters has multiple moves, yeah. like multiple different attacks, multiple different specials. It's there. It's really kind of like impressively deep. So it doesn't get stale quickly. No, I don't. I don't uh, not th not as far as I can tell. Like again, we only played the first couple of levels, but like I really dug it. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited to play more of it. And yeah. you were right. It was developed by people who previously worked on Rayman. There you go. Hmm. Zach was right. So Rayman, it has a, it has a good like, origins. Uh, you know, I'm not Rayman Odyssey. Not sure. Uh. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I liked. Uh, I think the combat for me was really the big draw. Like Brian, you and you and I have talked previously about a platformer's jump. Mm -hmm. You can tell very quickly. Oh Within yeah, in half a second. Not in love with the jump in this game. Oh really? Because no. I, really I felt it. like yeah. I to me it was very like. I don't know, was it too floaty for you? or It was like a little bit imprecise and floaty for me. See, I felt the opposite way. Like, I felt within the a first couple of minutes of playing through that level, like, I knew exactly where I was going to land every time I jumped. I, I had problems with, like, climbing onto ledges, like, grabbing edges and climbing up over things. Mm -hmm. It was, like, a little, little well, issues I, here and there, but it, like... It also felt like that wasn't totally the point, right? Like, you can get platformers that aren't, like, the best jumpers to me and then still be great because of, like, the combat in that game and the combos and all the different moves and the fact that you can mid-combo switch to a different character really yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. it's just, it was really, really cool. It brought something different that I really liked. That's awesome. I mean, not every game can be a bridge builder, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it's really cool. The art is amazing. The story is a retelling of Journey to the West, which has been done before. But I was going to say, finally, a game that retells <laughs> Journey to the West. <laughs> but um, I, I really enjoy it, and I'm really excited to play more of it, especially because it's it's easy drop and co-op. Like, you can just go play it on the couch, and you know, you want to join? It's so yeah. it's it's nice. I'm appreciating it. But I want to move on to games this week. Uh, really quick, uh, this game called Demo is a music rhythm game that centers around a mystifying relationship between Demo and a little girl. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> but it has Nintendo Labo piano support, which is really interesting. So you can actually play the piano as this character in this game, hmm. which is kind of cool. That is cool. For select songs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll I could, see. I could At least you tried. Yeah. The, the, I know, the cone like, of uh, disappointment yeah. shrunk down to like the tip of an upside down pyramid. There. If you're interested in those kind of games, I think you should still look it up. And yeah, that's cool. Another game which has a really good pedigree of a bunch of people who used to work on Mega Man Zero games is... Ooh, um, underrated series. Yes, yeah. is Dragon Marked for Death. And this is another side-scrolling action RPG, and it's a it's also side-scrolling, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't say this in the shop, uh, but there are two different versions, and Frontline Fighters comes with Empress and Warrior characters, and Advanced Attacker comes with Shinobi and Witch. So if you buy one, you have it's to like buy the other one as DLC. It does not say this anywhere in the eShop. Yeah. I had to go to their actual yeah. website to find that out. And they both have full Labo piano support. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can control all of your characters with the Nintendo Labo. But definitely check out the main website for more info on that game. I know some of you were talking about it in our 
uh, Facebook forums. Is, nice. it, is it dragon subtitle marked for death, or is there a dragon marked for death in this game? You know what? Uh, I can't tell you that. Okay. I apologize. Spoilers. It's a Look spoiler. It up. It's a spoiler. Yeah. Colons are spoilers now. Oh, wait. That could be taken a lot of different ways. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yikes. So those games are out this week. And you know what else is out this week? War Groove. War Groove. <laughs> Which Tom Marks reviewed I, for us. I did. I did do that. Tell what us did about you War Groove. Uh, I gave those it good doggos. 8.5 because of all of the dogs mm. and nothing else. Pretty much it was a dog game and I was happy. No, there is uh, adorable little dog things. But I was going to say, our point. reviews are really going out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's a Advance Wars style tactics game. And I say Advance Wars style because... They wear their inspiration on their shoulder. I, they, like, they very, very much are up front. It's developer Chucklefish, the people who made Starbound. Uh, they're very clear about, like, hey, Nintendo hasn't made an Advance Wars game in 11 years. Right. Let's just make in, an Advance yeah. Wars I just, game. I just wanted to point out that in the notes, you put, oh, my God, Advance Wars is back. But is it? And then in parentheses, you put yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. This feels like, a, like it was a Kickstarter game from people who used to work on Advance Wars. Well, the mm. funny thing is there were already Kickstarter games from people who used to work on Advance Wars, and they were not good. So, <laughs> Oh. Yeah, like, but this one is. Yeah, so a couple other games. like I think it was Tiny Metal was the one that was... Developed that was the, the that was creator. the one that was uh, last year that everybody was like, oh, here comes Advance Wars 2.0. Yeah. yeah, and it was kind of just like, eh. Like, it wasn't bad. It was just like it f- looked kind of low quality to be mean about it. Like, it just looked a little rough around the edges. It was like a 3D look. Mm-hmm. This one is not the exact same because it, it looks how, like, you remember Advance Wars looking. Yeah, uh-huh. It's very, very, very lush compared to what Advance Wars was if you actually go back and look at Advance Wars. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. The pixel art is really well done. Hmm. Yeah, and it's a, it's really cool because it also puts its own spins on it. Like, there's this whole crit system where your critical hits are dep- dependent on where you're standing. So, like, if you're pikemen, you need to have them stand in a line next to each other to do crits, or dogs, you need to, like, surround an enemy with more dogs to do criticals. And so it makes you think a lot about the movement and they add a lot of little things that it's like, yeah, it's Advance Wars, but it, it does do stuff differently in, in really cool ways. I feel like such a big part of Advance Wars was the just the actual charm of the game itself. Do mm-hmm. you find that mm, Wargroove has that a similar sort of charm? It's very charming. Yeah. Yes. Like if you go there's a dog commander named Caesar and he's wearing armor and if you go into his description it like where usually it tells you like their crit information and stuff it just says he's a very very good boy <laughs> <laughs> like he, it, it's a really really cutesy game yeah. the writing can, can that be trusted though he might have written that himself <laughs> it's, it's fair true. no he can't talk there's there's really good like moments where he goes <laughs> to <laughs> He, he, I'm like I want to stress, he's just a dog okay. with armor. <laughs> with armor, yes, but he's not like a magic dog. There's all these side quests. His howl is inspirational. That's true. He can howl and he inspires the troops around him, and they go again. It's great. that's awesome. Um, he he. There are side quests magic where you dog. go into you go into save ten out of like, ten. All the side quests are about like saving civilians or mm-hmm. saving villagers and. He always is fighting these bandits, and the bandits, there's this great recurring storyline in these bandit side quests where the bandits are like, hey, it's that dog again. Come, everyone help me beat up this dog. <laughs> and they just like keep getting their butt kicked by a dog. It's really charming in that regard. The story and campaign itself is like a little, like there, it continues to be charming and funny, but it's very shallow. Like the the campaign is basically just a series of connected missions. There's nothing... Besides the story, there's nothing in between that progresses or changes over them. You don't level up. You're not changing units. None of that. And you were telling me earlier that the mission length can be kind of unforgiving. Like yeah, you it's could not take an all hour in and then lose and then Oosh. Yeah, it's not all of them, but definitely 45-plus minute missions are not uncommon. I had one that took me like two hours. I've heard reports from other people that are saying I'm a casual and they don't take that long for them. But for me, it was... Well, yeah, everybody's a better gamer than us. I mean, it's fine. Uh, I guess so. But, yeah, they, we they just can love be the dogs. Yeah. And while you can save and quit and come back to the point... Oh, that's nice. Excuse me. You can come back to the point you're at, you left at. You cannot actually save and load. Uh, so if you're... And that's, I'm sure, to stop save scumming. Yeah, Save scumming sure. is this thing where you just save every turn, and then if something goes bad, you just do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. Um I really would have liked saves, even if it was just, like, really limited saving, because when you get 45 minutes into a mission 
and it's all like uh, some of the missions are literally just like run away, right? You're just trying to run across the map, and you do that for 45 minutes, and then if you lost at the end, you would just it, like it wouldn't be fun to do that again. Right. Yeah. And I had that happen a couple times where, I, and at that point, I actually lowered the difficulty a little bit. Because the difficulty sliders are super cool in the campaign. You can actually just go in and by percentage points turn down the amount of damage your units take. Oh, wow. Um, so for m- most... That's super the, customizable then. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for most of the back half of the game, I like just tuned it down like a few percentage points just to give me that little bit of safety net that the save would have provided. Um, and I, I had a blast because some of those missions are still real, real hard. That's really nice. I mean, I, I played some tactical strategy games like a Devil Survivor. There's this one boss fight... And like 40 minutes into the game, into the mission, you think you're done and then they throw another really hard boss at you. And I just did not yeah. want to do that an hour every mm-hmm. time for the chance to lose this really hard boss after yeah. getting mm-hmm. through the and, first hour. And that stuff's frustrating in yeah. any tactics game. Could people complain about that in the Fire Emblem games all the time mm-hmm. where whenever you have a mission where it's like you get really far in and then the enemy spawns 12 units around you and it's like, oh, now you got to fight out of this. It's just like, that's not, that doesn't help me make good tactical choices early on. It just means I have to replay this mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, The thing that I really want to stand about this game though, and like the campaign was fun, but not mind blowing, right? The thing that's incredible about Wargroove is that there's also an arcade mode, which is really, really fun and much shorter missions. Interesting. There's also puzzle mode where there's all these missions that are just like you're dropped into the middle of a fight and it's like you got one turn to win, go. And you just have to do it. And you, it, they're pretty hard. And then there's this unbelievable level editor. And I'm talking, you can make any level that's already in the game. You can make entire campaigns where you have a world map and you are dropping levels connected to each other with story. How cool. There's a cutscene editor where you can use any model in the game, give any character dialogue. So you can essentially emotes. build your own side story it, like in the RPG game. Maker. The yeah. vibe I that's got awesome. it's RPG Maker for Advance Wars and they're gonna have mod support eventually. Damn, on that's PC. cool. Yeah. So like it's only a matter of time before this game comes out on PC and then people just make Advance Wars make in right. it. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And on top of that you share those online. You can download them. It's really easy to download other people's maps. And it's cross-play between Xbox One, PC, and Switch. So if you make a map on Switch, I can go onto my PC and download it, and then we can play against each other on a cross-platform on it. That's really That's neat. Cool. It's like it. This game has a lot of little issues. We were talking about that earlier with like a lot of little bugs here and there. You're but playing it as well? Yeah. yeah. But there's just so much in it mm-hmm. that is so well done. It's it's really impressive. It's a really really great game. Yeah, you showed me you made the IGN logo. Yeah, like the a, IGN logo a playable has a map, level. Mm-hmm. which is really cool because it like the that way rules. you did the colors and then you had your Joy Cons on the side. It sort of just perfectly matched. Mm-hmm. It's very beautiful. Nice work. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. thanks for thanks for telling us about the review. Is there anything else you want to? No, add it's in? great. Just it's really fun. If you like Advance Wars, you're gonna like it. If you don't, then. I don't know, don't play the game. But basically, if you're into tactics, it's like just a really, really great tactics game. Uh, probably the campaign on its own is not like enough to sell me, but there are so many other things around it that I, I fell in love. I really did. And it's yeah. out February 1st? February 1st, so f- this Friday. Friday. Okay, yeah. and if you're interested, you can go read Tom's full review on IGN.com. And now, we only have a few minutes left, but I would like to play a little game, as Zach likes to call it. Question block. Game of the year. Yeah. Game of the year. Question block. Every year. Mm -hmm. If Pear were here, he would say, (laughs) no, it's not a game. (laughs) But our first question comes from Jeff Gibbony from our NBC Facebook podcast forums. And he asks, with Piranha Plant corrupting save files, what save files have you had corrupted on you? Also get Mm. the thing. Um, I had, so when the Bioshock collection came out uh, for PS4, I went back and played the original Bioshock. It's one of my favorite games of all time, but I ran into a save bug where uh, no matter how far I progressed past a certain point, it would only load me to this one one point. Uh. Ooh. Yeah, and so like it, it, I'd I'd play and I'd get to you know like you know an hour or so ahead of that, and then if I walked away from my PlayStation and came back and rebooted it, it would just be at that same save point. Like it sucks. yeah, so I ended up having to just sit through the whole like last half of the game in one sitting, which it's not a very long game. But it was like it was kind of a bummer. So, yeah. yeah. Um, if you had a GameCube, which you probably did, if you're listening to the show, you probably remember memory cards and yep. third party memory cards. <laughs> oh, oh no. Third party memory cards. Yeah, they could hold so much data, like, like 256 megabytes, <laughs> just tons. Like, which is I think four photos now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was playing Wind Waker, and when you beat Wind Waker and go through a second time, 
there's this awesome end game where they give you this picto box, which is basically a camera, and it lets you take pictures of everything in the game and turn them into amiibos, basically. And so you would take these photos, you'd scan them into this machine, and you would get this gallery of high-res 3D models of every character in the game that you could spin around. And I was on like a 99% completion run of doing that. By the way, a lot of those are like bosses that you can only get once, that have second forms, really that you can cool. only get like half of once. It was really hard to do. <laughs> and uh, one day I just put in my Mad Cats 256 megabyte memory card <laughs> only 90s kids remember yeah, mad cats and it was just nuked everything on there was just gone and i lost everything luckily like my animal crossing save file was okay because i used the one that came with the game because it did uh but everything else on there was destroyed including my those, those mad that cats so like sad. the high capacity memory cards you could sneeze at them and they would yeah. get erased like they, they were, were so was terrifying ridiculous. yeah so terrifying yeah. now like, i'm afraid Russian to go roulette. check mine uh the so i had a laptop die Right, literally right before I was at the final boss of Borderlands 1, and I didn't uh, go back and beat it for years after that because I was crushed. But probably the most tragic was uh, when I was a little kid, because I'm younger than you two. Um, How dare you? And or us? <laughs> <laughs> Both? That was such a low effort joke. Uh, so I had to rent most of my Super Nintendo games from a local game store. I love you, Brian Altano. I love you too, Zach. So I, I had to rent them, and the, a lot of the Super Nintendo games that had saves saved onto the cartridge. Yes. Right. And so I had to memorize the serial number of the game at the local <laughs> store so that I didn't get the wrong one. Oh, my God. And then there were times where I would... Bring, like I'd have to, I wouldn't have enough like allowance or whatever to rent it again, and because I didn't understand that buying was a thing you could do. Yeah. So I uh, would rent the game and I'd bring it home and my save file would just be gone because someone else somebody had else had it rented and it. Needed it and yeah. it was like that happened a couple times. Ugh. Always hurt. So that's not corrupted, but it like it was crushing childhood. It was corruption I, I in the hearts you started, of men for deleting your save files off that cart. Uh. <laughs> you started that story with being like I'm young, and then you're like, here's this thing no one has had to deal with in 30 years. <laughs> Well, I just meant because I couldn't afford Super Nintendo games. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I had to rent them. To be fair, I also couldn't afford yeah. Super Nintendo games. Do you think they just yeah. give you a ton two? of money when you reach a certain age? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on being 25. You. You're 15. Here's 10 games. Yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't have any save files. I don't think I've had save files just disappear out of thin air on me. I have accidentally erased stuff, mm. which was sad. But I did have some corrupted children uh, erase my Pokemon save. Wait, corrupted children? I mean, they had to be corrupted. It just takes some poor girl's Pokemon game and delete her save out of Jesus. Oh, menace. Like, so these yeah. are like so high school children. bullies? I thought you meant like little No, I was, on a, I was yeah, on a right? field trip. I think I must have been like nine or something um, in like a summer camp. And we all left all of our Game Boys and everything in the buses. And some boys snuck onto the bus after we had already gotten to the park to get my Game Boy and delete my Just save. yours? Just mine. Dang. And delete my save just because they were mean for no reason. Sounds like somebody had a big old Pokemon crush on you. Yeah. No, what it was what like, prison are those kids in now? <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to know. But um, so I I went back. So they came back after they did it and they're like, oh, Casey, okay, so you should go check your Pokemon save. Ha, oh, ha, guilty. ha. So and guilty. I went and snuck on the, yeah. on the bus and checked it and it was deleted. And I went back and obviously I told on them because that's really mean. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Obviously, I told on them. <laughs> well, I was like nine, and they delete. I was trying to complete my Pokedex. I had 107 Pokemon. That's so I was, you know, pretty close. Kids can be so cruel. This and is a formative memory yeah. hearing right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I remember. I That's uh, why Casey's I'm, so mean. I moped. Yeah, because uh, yeah, this happened to me, and I've never been the same ever since. But Built a wall I went around her heart and moped around it. We were at a pool, and instead of going in the pool and having fun and swimming, I like sat on a bench and just like. That's what I did at, at most pool hands. parties anyway. <laughs> and was sad. But I remember the counselor got everyone together and told him, was like, you cannot do this. And she turned over to me and she Can't was like, deleting Pokemon. She turned over to me and she's like, how many, how many do you have? And I was like, 107. She's like, she had 107 <laughs> Pokemon. She almost completed the Pokedex and you took that that's, from her. That's a good teacher. Yeah, yeah, she was great. And then they couldn't go on next week's field trip. Oh, honorable <laughs> justice. Honorable mention to when I lost but then they mocked literally me that every they got save file on my Switch a year after. Oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah, pretty that's bad, right. too. Yeah. No. I try not to think about that too much. Um, but there it is again but now, on the center in my brain. Now at least we have cloud saves one year too late. Yep. I'm Speaking sorry, Brian. Mocha. But Don't um, play Proud to play an all-star mode. <laughs> <laughs> or do, you know, test yeah. the fate. There's a chance it that's won't true. corrupt your save. That's true. It's like a reverse lottery. I keep losing. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, poor Brian. 
And we have time for one more question from yep. Chris Martin. He says, when will we get a new Monster Hunter entry on the Switch? Shocking that of the questions on the yeah. list, this is the one that and you chose. And to that, I don't have an answer for you, but thank you for allowing me the chance to say Monster Hunter on NBC this week. <laughs> uh, and with that, that is the end of our show. When would you like a new Monster Hunter? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Soon? I would love a new Monster Hunter whenever. I actually really want a Monster Hunter, I want a sequel to Monster Hunter Stories to come out on the Switch. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. I would very much enjoy that. But that's our show. Remember, you can catch us. Actually, I want to thank you guys for <laughs> joining me this morning. Of I course. really appreciate because we had time change and it's early and super appreciate it. But you can catch NBC on IGN.com every Thursday at 3 p.m. and every Friday on YouTube at uh, YouTube.com slash Nintendo Voice Nintendo Chat. Voice Chat. Yeah. There you go. Thanks again. My name is Casey DeFridis. And remember, always come to NBC to get the thing. Get the thing.